discuss the uh, the Indian behind the uh, the power that uh, Yoshua and Kalev had that they were not uh, dragged along with the uh, pressure from the other ten Miraglim. Sadly, it wasn't enough for Am Yisrael because Am Yisrael took the word of the ten over the word of the two. <coughs> so uh, the interesting thing to look into is uh, Moshe Rabbeinu added a Yud to Yoshua's name, uh, which we're going to discuss in a second what that means and what the significance of that is. And Kalev, Chazal tell us, Rashi brings it, he wandered off to Davin by the Mora Samach Pela, and that's where he drew his power from. So Yoshua draws his power from the letter Yud, and uh, <coughs> Kalev draws his power from the Mora Samach Pela, and this is what helped both of them respectively, that they didn't get, get dragged along you know, with the uh, eights of the Miraglin. Right. To understand this, uh, we'll um, first discuss very briefly right, the Indian that the Torah was given in the Midbar, even though mitzvahs, for the most part, many of them, went, only first went into, um, into uh, being uh, applicable in Eretz Yisrael. Uh, why didn't HaKadosh Baruch Hu give the Torah in Eretz Yisrael? Right, which is where uh, all the mitzvahs apply. Right. The idea is like this, that it really has to do with the question why body and soul are two separate entities. Why didn't HaKadosh Baruch Hu make man just one integrated unit? Like an angel is 100% angel. It doesn't have a, you know, two parts to them, two different distinct parts. And uh, Lahav deal, right, an animal you know, whatever, every inch of it is animal, you know. <laughs> the Odom is the uh, one creature that is made up of two opposites, <laughs> and the Shoma and the Guf. Why is that? So the Ramchal explains, you know, in the Das Tunis, that, um, to put it in uh, layman's terms, when you have a deficit, the only way to solve a deficit is by bringing in resources from somewhere else. Right, this is what uh, this Canaan told David Amela when they came into him every morning said, I'm Chayisrael, Tzuchim Parnosa, the Jewish people need you know, Parnosa. So David Amela said, well, L'chou is Parnosa, Zem Mizeh, well, do commerce with each other. So he told him, Ena komitz mazbi esari, veena bor mismalim mechul yoso. Right, first of all, Amisol has a big appetite and it can't be satisfied with a little, but aside from that, you can't dig up dirt from a pit to have dirt to fill in the pit, right? When there's a deficit, the only thing you can't bring from the thing itself that's missing, its own hashlama, you got to bring in from somewhere else, right? And that's why David HaMelech uh, comes to the conclusion they have to do Mochemes Roshos, a uh, military campaign, right, to expand Eretz Yisrael, conquer other lands and bring their resources in to solve the deficit. Now, what you're missing, you're missing, right? You can't give yourself what you don't have, right? So the hashlama has to come from somewhere else. The body that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us right, is deficient and needs to be completed, needs to be perfected, needs to become more spiritual. Right? The body has not the resources from itself to give itself what it's lacking. What you're lacking, you're lacking. You've got to bring it in from somewhere else. And the Eitzah for the Tikkun Aguf is to have a neshama from heaven, a neshama that comes in from somewhere else totally and could import from where it comes from, the resources that the body needs to complete itself and be mashlam itself and make itself immortal. And, the same, and just like that's true in the individual, that the guf needs a neshama from a different place to bring in what the body doesn't have, and that's how the guf will have its tikkun. The same thing is true cosmically. To make olam azeh, which is the physical world, where the body is from, to make it perfect, Right, to make it the utopia that it's supposed to metamorphosize into, you got to bring down a Torah from heaven. Right? And, and the Torah from, from heaven is going to infuse into the earthliness what the earthliness doesn't have. The fact that the Torah was given in the desert shows that Torah is not of this world. It's from somewhere else. That's why it couldn't be given within civilization, and because Torah is coming from a higher place. And that's why it could fix the world. It could fix the world because it's not earthly. And it could give the earth what it doesn't have. So the giving of the Torah reflected what Torah is about. It's something otherworldly. The desert is not this world. No one lives in the desert. That's, you know, desert is desolate. It's not really this world. <clears throat> you know, Torah is given in the desert to show what it is. And then 
the Torah is actually imported and grafted onto Eretz Yisrael, right? And, and, and through being grafted onto Eretz Yisrael, that's how it enters the whole world. As it were, Eretz Yisrael, why it's called Eretz HaKodesh, or Eretz HaChayim, like Nishmas Chayim, because Eretz Yisrael is the intermediary point on the globe that can receive. It's on the frequency to receive Kedusha and to receive the spiritual. And by the spiritual entering Eretz Yisrael, from there it spreads to the rest of the globe. And that's why the whole globe is always obsessed with what's going on in Eretz Yisrael. Because Eretz Yisrael, they, people subconsciously sense it's the center. And Kedusha enters physical reality through Eretz Yisrael. From there it spreads everywhere else. Which means that Torah and Eretz Yisrael have like a body-soul relationship. Right? Eretz Yisrael is the body that could be Makabo, the Chaim, right? the Nishmas Chaim of the Torah. Right? You know what also has that type of relationship? The Zohar says in, uh, <coughs> in Parshas Chai Yisora, Dafka on the Psukim uh, talking about how Avram bought Marasa Machpelah right, to honor Sarah and to eulogize her. Everything goes on over there. Says the Zohar right there in the Medrash Hanela that, that the Neshama and Guf the spiritual and the physical have a male-female relationship, where the, the zohar, right, the uh, male is mashpia, he emanates, and the woman is the receptacle that receives. It's an amazing thing about Marasa Machpelah, right, the whole story in Parshas Chaisar. It is the first Leviah in history. Right? Until then, you had 2,000 years of world history, it just says, Vayomos, 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 and this guy died, and this guy died, and that guy died. Doesn't talk about a single honorable, uh, honorable, uh, you know, hesped or kvura. Not only that, there's hardly a woman mentioned by name, as far as I know. Only you know, there's uh, three women mentioned in history prior to Sarah Imenu. There's Chava, and there's Neshe Lemech, Oda and Tzila. Right? The rest of the generations, we have no idea who they were married to. But right? I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Is there more? No, I said aside that. So we're up to four. All right. Sorry, I stand correct. Not three, four. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, then uh, things change by the others. Right? We start talking about the emohos also. Right? And not only that, together with talking about the emohos came the concept of an honorable, uh, you know, hesped, levaya, kavura. And this is uh, it's not a coincidence. All right, as we explained, in light of that Zohar and Parshas Chayesara, the woman represents the body. In the integrated unit of man and woman, that they're like one person, Vayula Basar Echad, in the integrated unit, the Adam, the Zohar, is connected the Neshama, and the woman is connected the Guf. Right? When the Ovos started creating a new type of humanity that becomes Am Yisrael, one of the things that gets revealed is Kedusha Saguf, that the body is holy also. Right? And of course, the mitzvah that Avram Binu gets that sets him apart from the Bnei Noach sort of uh, uh, you know, points in that direction, bris mila. Right? There's kedusha even in the body. And as a function of kedusha saguf that's revealed, right, so we also see, as it were, the sanctity of the woman. Until now, the woman was like tuffel totally right, to the Zohar, not even mentioned by name, except for four cases in history, like Rabbi Kivalev has pointed out. Right, now, you know, the Imos get very honorable mention because Kedusha Saguf, which is the Indian of the Nekeva, is revealed. And this all happens together with revealing the idea that there's a special country, Eretz Yisrael. Avram Vinu's mission starts with Lecha, Me'artz, Avatcha, Betcha, El Oretz, Asherecha. All these concepts are parallel. The Kedusha that there is in Gashmias, the Kedusha that there is in Oretz, the Kedusha which there is in Guf, which is represented by the woman. And so Marasa Machpelah, which is the first time to honor the body that died, that the honor, you don't just throw it in the garbage, right? to give honor to the guf because it's a kli that was makabo from the neshama, right? <coughs> and that idea is represented by the woman, right? so, and that's the idea of, of Hebron, Hebron, one of the holy cities of Eretz Yisrael, David HaMelech's Malchus started in Hebron, and then it moved to Yerushalayim, and there's some very deep reasons in that, which you don't have time to fully develop, but, but suffice it to say, Hebron is Miloshen Chibur. And even though it's a graveyard, and that's what Chazal say, that even Hebron, which is, you know, as it were, the worst real estate in Eretz Yisrael at the time, because it was set aside for graves, is even seven times nicer than Tzohan Mitzrayim, 
right? That in Eretz Yisrael, Hebron, it's revealed the Chibur that there is between the Ruchnius and the Gashmius, which is the Chibur between the soul and the body, which is all paralleled by the Chibur of a Zohar and a Nekeva when they become and they're joined together in holy union, Zohu, Shechina, Shuriya, Beinayim, and that's Kayadua. You know, the Gemara says in Menachas, Ki Ka Hashem Tzoralon, with the name Ka, Yud and He, HaKosh will fashion two worlds. He made the higher world with the letter Yud. He made this world, Olam with the letter He. Uh, <coughs> Ish has the Yud, because he represents the Neshama. He's representing, you know, he has his own Neshama and Guf, but he, in the integrator, he's representative of the Neshama that came from the higher world. And the Isha, who has the He, is his representative of the Guf that's from this world. And, you, and the two together make up the divine name. They're meant to fit together like the piece of the puzzle that what sticks out over here fits and fills in what's missing over there, that the one completes the other, and that's how they fit together as an integrated unit. And that's the relationship between Tyra and Eretz Yisrael. And that's what it means, that Moshe Rabbeinu added to Yoshua's name the letter Yud. Because as we've explained a few nights ago, and as we're explaining tonight, Eretz Yisrael is to go into Olam Hazed. The Midbar was like not living in Olam Hazed. They didn't live, live natural lives. The Midbar where the Torah was given, they lived a supernatural life, you know, you know, the man from heaven, the be'er, the onan did the laundry. Right? They were not living on earth. And the Indian of the uh, Miraglim, they were initially sent to scout out and pave the way of bridging the supernatural with the natural. Bridging the Torah that they got in the desert with the natural world. <coughs> so now, Eretz Yisrael, Eretz, right? That's earth. That's the hay. Olam Hazeh. Eretz Yisrael is Olam Hazeh. Yoshua gets the Yud, from, which represents the higher world. That Yoshua is supposed to be that bridge. That all the Moroccan were meant to be a part of this project, as we explained a few nights ago. To bridge the higher with the lower. To bridge the spiritual with the physical. Yoshua gets the letter Yud, which is the power from the higher world, which is supposed to be integrated and put into the lower world. Now, Kalev, Kalev, where did he get his strength from? He got his strength from Ma'aras HaMachpela. Not a coincidence. Everything we spoke about. Ma'aras HaMachpela, Hebron, Chibur. That shows the big transition that Gashmias and the body is meant to receive from Ruchlias. That's the whole story of Chaye Sora. The body is not something you just throw away after it expires, like an old piece of machinery. It's something holy because it absorbed from Kedushas HaNeshama. That's why it deserves an honorable hesped, an honorable kvura. Right? And, and that's what Hebron shows all of, it was over. Hebron, Milosh, and Chibur to show that the bond between body and soul is permanent and that's why that body is destined to get up again to Kiyas HaMesim. One other reason why it's called Marasa Machpelah, right? that it's Aliyah Gabe, you know, it's an Aliyah Gabe, the uh, bias, it's a bias in Aliyah, representing that the Nisham, which is the top floor, is connected to the bias, the body, which is the lower floor, and Kayadua Beso Zu Ishto. Your wife has called your house, so it's a bias in Aliyah. And what's the another pshat why it's called Marasa Machpelah? Double. Because man and woman are better buried together. Zugos. Odom and Chava. Abram and Sarah, Yitzhak and Rivka, Yaakov and Leah. Again, representing the, the never ceasing merger and connection between the man and the woman, which is between the soul and the body, which is between the. <coughs> Ruchnius and the Gashmius. So that's what it means. Not a coincidence. Yoshua gets his cough from the letter Yud, that even though he's now moving around Olam Hazed, the Meraglin, they're moving around Olam Hazed, moving around Teva, they got very, very shooken up. They couldn't handle it. They got afraid of it. Yoshua is still connected to the higher world, even though he's moving around the Gashmius. And <coughs> Kalev gets his power from Ma'ora Samachpela. Right? That's where the two universes meet. Even in death, they do not part. And that's what Yerushalayim is so much more so. And that's saying that David Amalek was a nafo. He barely had any life. He had his life on loan from Adam Arishan. He started his Malchus in Hebron. And as he zochet to more and more life, he graduates from Hebron to Yerushalayim. But Hebron is like the lowest ebb, showing that even in death, there is life. Even in death, there is still connection. So that's where Kalev gets his power from. And to bring it all full circle, there is another Lashen Chazal. That said, where did the Yud of Yoshua come from? Besides that Yud represents the higher world, that he didn't lose his connection to the higher world while moving around the Olam Ativi. But another Lashen Chazal is, where did that Yud come from? Sarai. Sarai. From Sarai Menu. Right? 
that HaKadosh Baruch says that not one letter of Torah is ever bottled, so I, we took away the Yud from Sarai. No, it didn't, wasn't bottled. That Yud from Sarai became the Yud of Yahushua, again, going full circle, because from Sarai Menu and the acquiring of Hebron, and everything of Hebron and burial, and in Mar Samachpel represents, that's where Yahushua got his Koch from, to not lose sight that the Gashmias, as different as it is from Ruchnias, it's no different than the big difference between a Nekeva and a Zohar, that they're meant to be bonded together forever.